strap match is on the horizon, the inner circle pretty much took the pinnacle home, if you notice the title for this review show, an amazing TNT championship match, and a main event that had the whole inner circle celebrating. And even Negative One and Cole Gabbana cheering a couple water bottles. All that and more as we review last night's AEW Dynamite. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kimmy Talks Wrestling, and we're starting... Trend the last couple weeks, AEW Diamond has been on Fridays. And let's talk about the big announcement that next week, Arn Anderson's twin, Brock Anderson, I'm totally joking, I know it's his son, but literally if you look at younger pictures of Arn Anderson, compared to Brock Anderson, it literally looks the same. Next week, he'll be Cody Rhodes and the debuting Brock Anderson wrestling Anthony Agogo and QT Marshall. Please, please, July 7th at Road Rager, please make this feud end. I'm telling you, I'm tired of it. I want it to leave. So basically, Cody's out here. He's really excited that Brock's debuting and Arn, of course, proud dad. And QT Marshall is just like, well, you know, I beat you last week. So I don't even know why we're doing this match again. And then challenges Cody to a South Beach strap fight which is basically a strap match so basically this is going to be four corners so you know Cody's going to have the strap and QT Marshall's going to have the strap and the first person to touch all four corners of the ring wins. I'm really hoping that this feud ends. I am tired of it. If you followed on my old channel or even on here, uh, no, Anthony Go goes a no, QT Marshall's a no. Just please, please get this off my TV. But, speaking of tag team matches, we're going to move into Sting and Darby Allen's announcement. Because this actually goes into something that I said on the AEP. So, obviously, next week it will be Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page versus Darby Allen and a tag team partner of his choosing. So now, speculations were crazy of who Darby Allen is going to pick. And Darby Allen and Sting had a promo. And Darby Allen goes, you know what? I want this to be a handicap match. I want to prove myself. I want to prove that I still mean something in AEW. I want to do this solo. And Sting's just like, are you kidding me, dude? Like, why are you going to do this yourself? I don't want you to do this yourself. I want, you know, I want someone to help you. And Darby's like, please, please, Sting, just stay home. Do not come out. And they're like bickering, fighting, fighting. And Sting's like, fine, fine, I'll stay home, you know. I'll do it. And Sting goes to do a little fist pump, and Darby's just looking at him like, are you kidding me? So I'm going to predict that next week, Sting is going to come back, and Sting is actually going to accidentally cause Darby Allen the match, which is going to lead slowly but surely to a Darby Allen Sting cinematic match, where those two minds, like Kyle has said, are going to be phenomenal in this cinematic match. But, you know, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page basically said that Darby's stupid, he shouldn't be doing this, and that they're going to win. I'm looking forward to this, but like I said, that's my prediction for next week. Sting, yike. But let's talk about the main title of this review show. Oh, Inner Circle, Take Me Home, Thion of um, Old Town Road. So, it's funny because I like to top Kyle in my All Elite and my AEW reviews now compared to what he's going to do at the time of this recording at 12.53 in the morning I don't know what he's going to do so I still hope my title is better anyway so the Pinnacle's coming out and basically they're all going through like the individual things you know FTR starts talking about Santana Ortiz saying that they all came up from nothing and they respect them Sean Spears is talking about how he like Sammy Guerrero became a household name the, at the cost of Sean Spears, Wardlow accepts Jake Hager's cage MMA fight for next week, and MJF basically talks about how, and he's talked about this a couple times in previous promos, how he was so excited to be working with Chris Jericho, who's his hero, and the first time they met, and I believe he said the double or nothing 
press release conference that you know he was so excited his arm was beating so fast that he probably got to meet he got to meet his idol he would get to tag with him he would get to work with him wrestle him and he didn't live up to the hype and he is not accepting Chris Jericho's challenge for a one-on-one -on -one match then they pan to the parking lot because if you also then a circle put up in a limo at the beginning of dynamite and Chris Jarek was like, you might want to take an Uber home. And so they start destroying the limo with baseball bats, spray paint, and then Jake Hager, I don't know what type of truck it was. It's like this construction type thing, literally ran into the limo and was like dangling the limo. So now the inner circle and pinnacle aren't over. To me, I felt like at Double or Nothing, the wrong decision was made. I understand, I kind of understand why you wanted to continue this into the summer, but if you're going to do a third match of both teams, I don't know where you're going to go, because I feel like you can't do a standard wrestling match. You have to do a third stipulation, and you're running out of stipulations, AEW. I mean, come on. But I'm excited to see where this goes. I enjoyed this segment a lot. I mean, AEW haters are going to say, oh, this is so similar to 1997 when Stone Cold Steve Austin destroyed Vince McMahon's limo, and I wasn't even born for that, by the way. Don't do that. This was good. It was funny. It was entertaining. I was excited. We also had Nyla Rose versus Layla Hirsch in a really good, like, eight-minute match. Of course, Nyla Rose won because she's going to be the person to go on and be Britt's first challenger. Tony did mention on commentary about how Britt, ba how Nyla Rose is the only person to beat Britt Baker in the year 2020. Important to note, they did that in the women's tournament. And Britt Baker just cut this amazing promo, and it, it, it ended so beautifully because she goes, you know what, you need this title to make you, but people like me make this title, make this new era in AEW, and this new era is all about the DMD, and I'm also really excited because my Britt Baker shirt comes tomorrow, the end new, the one she was wearing, comes tomorrow. I'm really excited. And then the TNT Championship match between Evil Uno and Miro, and just the inner circle, like all of them coming out, and just cheering him on, maybe more, like, oh my god, Evil Uno's gonna win, Evil Uno's gonna win, and I told him that Evil Uno was not gonna win. This match was really good. I think that they do work well together, and I really hope that a member of the Dark Order does defeat Miro at some point. Don't know when. I don't know which member either. <laughs> I think it'd be funny, based on BTE, if it's five, because they always give a lot of BS to five. And if five's the one to bring the TNT title back, and then they all worship five. That's really good storytelling. Anyway, this match is really good. Of course, Miro wins. He Uno loses. And, you know, it's a disappointing night for the Dark Order because they lost again. But not for long because of that main event. We had 10 teaming with Hangman Adam Page to take on Powerhouse Will Hobbs and Brian Cage. Now, this was a good 10-minute tag team match. Everyone got their offense in. And then Ricky Starks. Oh my god, Ricky Starks. So, it's coming to the wire. Brian Cage has the momentum, and Ricky's like, Brian! He throws the FWE title in there. He's looking at the title, and Brian throws it out. And Taz on commentary is like, What are you doing? He's trying to help you win. And Ricky goes to the apron. He's like, What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Brian Cage slaps Ricky, and Brian Cage is running after Ricky, and Ricky's like, my neck, my neck, I have a fractured neck, you can't do anything about it, I'm injured, I'm injured. So that feud is probably where we're going to be going next, um, whenever Ricky's cleared, I'm assuming with the slap, it, he's very close to being cleared. Um, so... This leaves Will Hobbs take on Hangman and Page in 10. 10 got the pin, which made me really excited because it means that they believe in 10. They believe in 10. And they show the replay and all the Dark Order's out there. They have a cooler of beers. It was so funny because Colt Cabana and Negative One, because Colt Cabana doesn't drink, and Negative One, of course, is underage. We're like with water bottles, just like cheering, like just a part of the celebration. And to just think, you know, like Kyle talks, I hate that I'm bringing up Kyle so much, but like Kyle talks about all the time when the Dark Water first debuted, everyone thought this was so stupid, they were just jobbers and this was pointless, and now they're one of the most over things in AEW. It's just so wholesome and so nice to see, and I'm literally waiting for the day that the Dark Order gets gold. And I did notice there's a lot of, there was a lot of mention of Brody. 
and I don't know if maybe that's leading to something. Like them winning gold, I know the triple tag titles are coming soon, so maybe that. Or I was thinking maybe they do like a Brody Memorial show every year, but that would probably be in December around the time where he passed. So yeah, I thought this anime was really good. I think compared to last week it was a lot better. It flowed a lot nicer. And I can't wait to see this cage match next week. I mean, I'm not really one for MMA people, but it should be interesting. But that is my AEW review. Of course, on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, you'll be able to hear Kyle and Tiff's opinion on everything AEW from Dark, Elevation, eight, a Dynamite, of course, and BTE. So make sure to tune into that on Monday. And like this video, comment what you all thought about Dynamite, click the bell for notifications, and subscribe. And I'll see you all... Monday with my NXT in your house review show and remember if you did not check out my Smackdown review watch the video right before this because I read that and we talk about Rollins and if you know me